Well done, you. I've, ne I've never heard before. Well done, you. Oh. I've never heard that before. That was a really good accent. I know, it sounds like I'm from here. I'm a local. Well, I'm a local. Do you one more time? Well done, you. Well done, you. Does that, does that sound No, that normal? was great. Yeah, it sounds like I'm from here. <laughs> gulp, gulp. <laughs> Big gulp sound effect. Yeah. Hey, I'm Finn Wolfhard. I'm McKenna Grace, and we're getting up close with Cosmo UK. It was amazing being in the firehouse. The attention to detail from their production design was so amazing. So, you know, identical to the original film. So that was really cool. And also being back in New York was pretty amazing. Usually like the advice just comes from like us watching them sort of and like them telling stories. Like they've never really um, been like, oh, this is how you do it. Or, you know, I'm sure if we asked them for advice, they would, and I'm sure at some point we, we did, and I just like can't really remember. It's very surreal seeing all these legends kind of around you and how, uh, it's pretty amazing how warm they were and how inviting they were. I completely agreed. The most that I learned from being around the OGs was just watching the way that they interact with people on set and the way that they act and the way they talk amongst themselves and figure out scenes and improv. Uh, it was, it's very incredible to be around. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well done you. I've, ne I've never heard before. Well done, you. Oh. I'd never heard that before. That was a really good accent. I know, it sounds like I'm from here. I'm a local. Well, I'm a local. Do you want more time? Well done, you. Well done, you. Does that, does that sound No, that normal? was great. Yeah, it sounds like I'm from here. <laughs> gulp, gulp, gulp. <laughs> Big gulp sound effect. Yeah, James didn't teach me any like slang or anything, but he was the person that I went to. I'd be like, where do I go and eat and find good food in London? And he uh, sent me to Shack Foo You. He told me to go there, and I went there probably every... We went there last we night. We went there last him. night, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I love it so much. I went there, I probably spent like every weekend there. <laughs> probably Paul, right? Yeah. Or James, or Kumail. Paul would go out of his way to make you laugh. Yeah. He just did in an interview and made me like cry. Yeah. Were you crying laughing? I had, I had a tear. Okay, I didn't know if that was like <laughs> like a bit of you guys <laughs> no. trying to be sad on purpose. No, I don't really were, know what it was. You were laughing so hard you cried? Yeah. Every single day there was just the dumbest bits just ever. Something new, it was so stupid. There's one that Paul would do that one day where he would, right before the take would start, he would start doing like a, co it's the dumbest, but and like it's one of those like you had to be there and even if you were there, it wouldn't even make sense. I was um, there and it didn't make sense. It didn't make any sense. It's like a guy doing um, voiceover for a documentary about the history of New York. And the whole bit was just like, they'd be like, okay, and, and then right before they'd say action, Paul would be like, and then in came the Dutch for Uptown. And they'd be like, action. And like, we'd all be like, trying not to laugh, but it was so nothing, it made no sense. I feel like nobody's like particularly like scared, scared of ghosts, but if anybody was gonna be scared of a ghost, it would be Dan. He's very confident in ghosts. Yeah, he's but very he would fascinated. be apprehensive of one, yeah. Yeah. maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I mean, he has the most encounters. Yeah. On set, McKenna brought her guitar, so we'd like all passed it around and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. then, um, yeah, we were shooting in London, so there was one time like we all went out to dinner and it was really nice and mm -hmm. just walking around London. You went to that place, that restaurant all the time. I literally was there in Soho, Shack for you every other day. It was my favorite place in the world. Hopefully they give you food. free food next time you're here. <laughs> now that Shack for you, I, Shout please. Out. <laughs> Sponsor me. Uh... Sponsor my posts. Yeah, please. Yeah. Like... Sponsor a Shaq Fu Yu post. <laughs> it's it's less intense fighting a ghost. So maybe I'd say ghost. It's, it's so it's so much more violent fighting a demi organ. I literally told him this the other day. I think that my favorite work of his is in it. Like I just thought that you were so funny in that. Whoa. And knowing you, I just know that you were just like messing around and just saying crap and that that's what they put in. And Thank that just you. like made me happy. I thought that it was really funny. I really like this movie that you were in. Uh, is it Troop Zero? Is that what it's called? You watched yeah, Troop Zero? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's really cute. Great movie. I really like that movie. That was when you were younger, obviously, but. I can't believe you watched that. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, that was that was like a few years, two years before the first one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were still like pretty little, but that it's like mm. a sweet movie. You got one? Dan Aykroyd motorbike. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on a motorbike with Dan Aykroyd. I was in sidecar. Logan Kim was uh, holding on to. <laughs> I was in sidecar. Logan Kim. <laughs> I was in the sidecar, child actor Logan Kim was holding on to Dan, uh, was sitting behind him. And Dan, it, he used to ride motorbikes all the time. Like he had one that he would drive up and down New York all the time. Uh, and he, 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 like last night, 
we were with the ADs and they were like, remember that time that you shot the scene with Dan and the motorbike and y'all almost crashed and y'all did crash? Uh, he drove out of the set. They let him drive the motorbike, drove out of the set. And he was so confident in it too. He was talking all day about how like this bike was like, it was okay and it was just gonna be easy. He drove out and he was just supposed to turn the corner and stop and he didn't stop. And he so just we just going. kept going. And all of a sudden I like turned around and everybody was chasing us and I was like, this doesn't feel right. And then I turned and I looked and all of a sudden my sidecar was headed straight for a massive ramp pile of dirt. And so my sidecar ramped up it, got air, slammed back on the ground. And then he kept going and the entire cart almost flipped over. And then he drove and went out the warehouse doors onto the street and finally stopped. And then he just got off and he was like, oh, sorry about that, guys. He just, I think he just wanted to go for a ride. Yeah. Because I remember him telling me that when we first moved to him being like, so did they let you take the Ecto-1 out for a ride? And I was like, no, they won't even let me near it. Like, and he was like, oh, you gotta take it out. It's such a fun car to drive. I was like, well, yeah, if they gave me the keys, then I would. <laughs> but that's just him. I think that's just him being like, I'm gonna go take it out. Tape. Tennis balls. Tennis balls. They have cardboard cutouts of some of those. That was nice. The first one as well. mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of like if the character designs, but they're on a they're on a stick. We had um a very very nice very tall man uh, playing yes. Raka, and he held Raka's head on a stick way high above everybody else. Mm -hmm. Um, that was cool. Yeah, that was really fun. Ian. 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 Shout out to Ian. See bye. you guys. Bye. Thanks for watching. Thank you.